Hello, everyone. Welcome to the orientation slash training sessions on the Republic Day Forensics 2023. Um, can you all please mute, please mute yourself? Okay. First of all, I think it's a really great opportunity to actually understand what forensics are because a large part of Indian population doesn't even understand what forensics basically stand for. But it's a very like good technique to to be able to do well in terms of auditory, um, like activities, but also debates, etc. Um, so we have a couple of formats coming in, but let's just first start with what exactly ugly future skills academy stand for we have done a couple of tournaments we've organized a couple of tournaments one of which and the most important is indian debating league which has been organized every year um you should probably participate in that as well we have participation from each state and then we have like interstate rounds um so it's like a very good opportunity to represent your own state be able to participate and also be able to like win from your state so one of the things that you can see on screen is like an example from 2021 we had harish natarajan so if you don't know who harish natarajan is he's a he's one of the very greatest debater of india but also like of the world in general um so harish natarajan, natarajan has was the coach during that time but we also had like people having like really really great like backdrops like Maharashtra as you can see on the screen we also had like a couple of other people as well so this is one of the screenshots but then last year also like 2022 it was a great success as well so you all can obviously like go on YouTube and check out all the that's like all the kinds of tournaments that ugly future skills academy organizes um moving on then we obviously had so much participation in different um places of India we have had um we have had people gone to Harvard we have had people like debate in across the across the world and like representing India on international stage and I think it's enough itself a great opportunity but the fact that you were able to represent India in the deb debating circuit is enough itself uh, a very good uh, you know thing not just on your CV but as an ex experience and exposure as well so what exactly are students going to gain with respect to this particular tournament so first is that you're going to have finals live at IIT Kanpur. Now IIT Kanpur and I think large chunk of IITs in India and IITs in general have a large amount of demand in India simply because of the kind of prestige that it holds in India. So IITs, the fact that you are going to be able to represent um, yourself and basically the fact that you're going to be able to debate or give your, your or present your speeches um, in person in IIT Kanpur in of itself is a really great opportunity. So finals are going to be live at IIT Kanpur. So irrespective of whether you qualify or not, but the, by the very virtue of the fact that you were a part of tournament, you can obviously go visit IIT Kanpur, be a, a spectator and so on and so forth. But obviously qualifying in of itself has a really good prestige attached to it. The second thing is that you're going to have multifold event exposure. Now you're going to have several events that I'm, I'm obviously going to deal with. So there's, there are going to be um, speech formats, debate formats, et cetera, et cetera. But the third thing then is about welcoming the young minds. So it's not, and I think the most chunk of debates um, are specifically you know, like just focus towards nine to 12th graders and stuff like that. But I think it's a very big misconception because people can debate the moment when you, uh, you're actually born for that matter. So the time when you were debating with your mom that, look, I want to get ice cream. And this is the reason why I need to get ice cream. That's also something which you debate. So you debate intrinsically and debate is a part of your like life intrinsically. It's just that you don't get that formal, um, like formal stage to actually debate them on. So we understand that debate is a thing which does not have age bars. And therefore, we like to give opportunity to do even like people from third standard as well. So we are going to have um, we are going to welcome people from third standard across till 12th standard as well. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I think it's always very amazing to like witness all these like really cute speeches and like really good speeches from the young minds as well. So we are going to have, uh, and we are going to witness these performances by the young minds of India as well. Now, fourth thing is that you're going to have activity based training. One of the activities are also going to be there in this session today. But what we are going to focus on is essentially how, how can you learn the art of debating or the art of speaking simply not just by like, you know, theoretical knowledge, but also um, in being able to, you know, understand how 
essentially certain kinds of format work with respect to certain kinds of activities like mocks and stuff like that so you're going to be able to um get trained by internationally acclaimed people and experts and obviously you're going to get holistic feedback so the moment you're going to give me a particular argument i'm going to tell you okay this is the argument which could have been done or this is where you can improve your argument as well the fifth thing then is recognition and appreciation. Obviously, if you're going to participate, we're going to recognize you on all media platforms. I don't know how many of you are following us on Instagram. We're on Instagram, we are on Twitter. We are also um, like on YouTube. So you can always go back and like watch all of our training videos. I think we have a couple on WSTC um, and other formats as well. I think public form as well. So you can obviously go back and check all those like training sessions that's like, like freely available to people. So you're obviously the moment when you're going to have like this recognition on media platforms, your debates are probably going to be featured in YouTube or your debates up like the short, like the short part of your uh, dramatic adaptation is probably going to be featured on Instagram. There's something which is a really good exposure as well, but also you're going to be re rewarded by um, exclusive ugly merch. So we have an, we have a merch as well. So you can obviously see that that too. So we have had like a couple of schools um, participating in IDL 2.0. And there's something which we have we did last year, the thing that I've talking to you about. So a couple of schools have been participating, but also like um, if you think that you know my school has been literally participating so many times, I think we recognize as that as well. So we have something called as large delegation or the best delegation. So if you think your um your school is participating let's say you're from this particular school and you have also your schoolmates participating in this event there's high likelihood that you're probably going to get large delegation because there is more participation from your school which is in of itself a great thing for your own school as well so yeah we have a couple of awards waiting for you all so please stay tuned and we have a couple of like recognitions in terms of like best like speaker wise or even in terms of winner winners, runners-ups, et cetera. Now, the thing that you are probably interested in more is that what is the theme of the, um, what is exactly the theme of our Republic Day debate? Because that's something which um, enlightens us as well. So what are we going to discuss about is basically the thing that we often tend to ignore, the, the, the very glory of India, the very glory of Indian um, Indian citizens and Indians in general, because even though Indians have like really great mind, I think we ourselves like tend to ignore that. We ourselves tend to ignore the kind of like achievements that Indians have done. So what exactly are going to be the motions? The motions are going to be probably on, let's say Indian diaspora or the, the kind of like, like how exactly we, can, we are going to be able to grow it or the future prospects of it. Now, if you want to understand what India, Indian diaspora is, uh, obviously like the people from India, who are able to do pretty well outside India as well. People who are working, let's say, who are, who, who are let's say, like the CEOs of these big companies, these multinational companies, and are doing pretty well as well. So these are the people who represent India, but also tell the world that Indians are no less than other, like, other countries as well. So India, even though being a developing nation, have been able to develop a large chunk of the entire world, if you want to say it so. So why exactly is it important is because India is married as a country with immense human resource, and its potential across the globe needs to be acknowledged more than ever. And this is because like, I think we have we all know about like Rishi Sunak, assuming the highest office in UK. How many of you all know about Rishi Sunak? Just like give me a heads up. Yes, so I think this is in of itself a very good um, like achievement from Indian from 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 the perspective of Indians in general. I'm really happy that most of you all actually are aware of it. So kudos to you all for that. But like, if I had to ask one of you, what is that one thing that you feel is the best about India and is specific to India? Like, tell me what one of the like biggest feature of India that you really appreciate. Like, you can raise your hand. Yes. Unity and diversity. Yes, we have unity and diversity. What else? The culture. Yes. Friendship, friendship with other nations. We do have the people. people. Yes, the people. You have Heritage. Different languages. Diversity. Heritage. Yes. Ma we have a really traditional system. Ma monument. Different yes. languages. Oh, intelligence yeah. all festivals let's try to be competitive okay let's try to find indian position let's say in terms of gdp now you all are free to use google and tell me where does india stand 
with respect to gdp like the contribution with respect to gdp so of- india india has um like over like has got a higher gdp than the country which conquered india like like almost 70 years back so they bet the gdp of yeah, britain and they still have a larger D- gdp so the gdp per capita of india is not as much as britain because india has a large population yeah yeah because india, india has a large population the largest country in the world yes yes what else um you are you all aware about indian constitution and what also is public- india is one of the top five India is also one of the top five largest military strength. Exactly. Countries. Yes. So that's what we're trying to like focus on. We're trying to focus and on also where like is peacekeepers in the world level. Yes. Yeah, peacekeepers yes. in the world level. Yes. So where is India actually standing in terms of international, like international stage? Where are we standing? Are we better than other nations, or are we going to be able to do better than other nations? All of which. is very important for you to understand with respect to this particular theme so this is what we're going to see and this is why this theme is the way the theme is but yeah i was asking you all of the question why is republic day celebrated does anyone know that mom the day was um, this was the day when the constitution was signed mom the, the day which the constitution, constitution of india was officially the assigned constitution india constitution is, was made this is in the day when the constellation was formed yes the con- constitution okay okay, okay. i would want you all i would want you all to unmute and let me pick out who i want to speak because it's just not i'm not able to comprehend what you all are speaking because you are all speaking together so just raise your hand if you know the answer and then no. i'm going to pick and choose and then we can uh, move forward okay anaga since you were speaking um, just go on Mom, uh, the Republic Day, January twenty sixth, is the day when the Indian Constitution was signed and brought into action. Okay, um, Shivam, what do you think? Mom, the Republic Day was first celebrated on twenty sixth Jan nineteen fifty, and okay. uh, I have the same answer as Anaka. Okay. When when was Um, when is Constitution Day celebrated? Can anyone tell me? Mom, twenty sixth of November. Correct. Then why is there a difference between Republic Day and Constitution Day? I mean, January twenty sixth, the Constitution was signed. I think the Constitution was formed on the twenty sixth of November. Yeah, so it came into force or it came into effect only in twenty sixth January, and that's why we we were declared as Republic, um, and therefore. It's a, it's called Republic Day. Now moving on, how exactly are we going to be able to? Do also, so, Republic Day helps India like maintain world um like relations with other countries. They invite the leaders of other countries to help India now. Hmm. True. Yes, and that's why we also have Republic Day parades, which are really cool. So if you all, I don't know how many of you all watch it, but that's like a thing for me. I it watch it. Also shows the union. Yes, ma'am. And also, like, um, it also shows how how powerful India is, how you how diverse they are. Yes. So, in, in with respect to this theme, we are going to have a three sixty degree view on the global achievements of Indians through the diverse format. Because I think Indians are not just doing pretty well with respect to, let's say, having managerial positions or being CEOs of particular companies, but also we are doing pretty well in terms of, let's say, political positions. Or even for that Most matter, people, the computers they are using to take this, like, would have been like either made by an Indian or looked through by an Indian. Correct. So that's what you're going to use in debates. So I want you to use all these statistics in your debates and in your speeches as well. Cool. So that's what we're going to see with respect to this theme. But what is there that we are going to offer you um, in RDF or Republic Day forensics? So this there are a couple of formats. Now I want you all to tell me how many of you all have opted for dramatic adaptation. Just raise your hand. Yeah, none of them have opted. Anika, you are unmuted. Oh. Okay. So I want you all to first give me a little bit of hint of why you felt that this format was attractive, and then I'm going to tell you why, like, why, like, why dr- dr- dramatic adaptation of itself is a really great format. So dramatic adaptations like helps us think into the perspective of other people. 
Yeah. Whether we like them or hate them, we know how they would have thought. We would have at least think, thought yeah. about how they thought. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. What else? Uh, we can uh, enact them by enacting them. We can understand them better and also gain a better perspective of the olden times in India. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, what did you think, Rajveer? So about like, it helps us learn more about the people who were citizens of our country and maybe help us do that to our country one more time. Correct. Yes. Shivang? Or you have, yeah. Ma Ma'am, the dramatic adaptations format, Ma'am, it helps us to think from the perspective of other world leaders. Yes. So I think we tend to, I, I think most of y'all have had this competition in your school where you had to dress up like, let's say, the freedom fighters, and then you had to talk about their life and how they fought. So for example, a large chunk of people in my school used to like dress up like Mahatma Gandhi or, um, you know, Kasuba Gandhi. So they used to talk about their perspective. Like and in our school, they had this competition. Like in our school, they had this competition. They dress up as them and come, but you have to speak about them in three different languages. Oh, that's also really fun. So that's the inspiration behind dramatic adaptation. However, there's another event that is actually a part of forensic. That's called dramatic interpretation. So we modified it a little bit and we started with dramatic adaptation where speakers are going to be given a personality and then you're going to be asked to, let's say, speak about a particular topic as to what this personality would have thought or would have opined if he was, let's say, present in this situation right now. Now, I think the example that is given right now is that Ukraine, Russia, and what do you think Mahatma Gandhi would think about it? Or what would be the perspective of Mahatma Gandhi um, with respect to the war in general? Can anyone just give me a wild guess as to what do you think the perspective of Mahatma Gandhi? The world must maintain Ma Ma world peace and Yes, no, I must wait in one place and only yourself. Let me choose who I want to speak. Like, just like mute, and I'll give you the opportunity to speak. So let's just find people who haven't spoken till now. Um, Anisha, tell. So I think that Mahatma Gandhi would actually say that stop this war. We want world peace. He would yes. try to start a movement to stop this war because he believes in peace. Correct. What else? Do we have other um, interpretations? So, Mitra, what do you think? So, I think like uh, he wanted some freedom in our country for everyone yes. and independence. Well, so, he wanted. so, if he thought about independence, then you can link it to Ukraine and say that, oh, it's bad for Russia to try and like. Um, you know, get hold of Russia because of essentially the sovereignty and independence of your Ukraine is also very important. So you can link it back to the motion on the topic that is being given to you and then use his principles yeah. as well. Right? So um, Krishna Khan, yes. what, what are your opinions? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I think that Gandhiji was a person who always promotes non-violence and as well as he looked for the benefit of our country. He would be in the support of peace as well as he would not be in likely to uh, he would not be likely to make a bad relationship with russia as well as ukraine but correct. he would support peace as well at that time correct so what do you think would be the way that mahatma gandhi would have probably taken with this mom he would have been neutral mom he uh, would have yes, been Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what is Indian stance? India is following his footsteps. India is and following his footsteps and not like being ready. Yes, ma'am. India is neutral right now. Yes. So you could also like link it back to the current situation and say that, oh, it goes in line with what this particular person would have done as well. Now, the next. Mahatma Gandhi would have held negotiations and yes, negotiations. Uh, probably not trying to uh, infuriate either of the sides. Because he was a strong believer of Ahinsa and he would try to take out the root cause of the problem. Correct. And he would have also probably like gone with, you know, trying to solve it diplomatically and so on. So, on. so yes, that's a very good understanding of it as well. Now, moving on to Turncoat. How many of you all have, have registered for Turncoat? Just, like, just raise your hand. I know Turncoat. 
you know turncoat no, i, I turncoat. also know about turncoat yeah so turncoat is essentially a very very famous thing yes ma'am exist yeah so um cool so let me just like go over it so the tone code is actually something where you know you have to talk your entire opinion on a particular thing the moment like you're told to look turn to it right so for example a topic will be given to you and then you're going to be asked to like prepare for both sides you know you can't just like let's say speak for the motion or just support the motion but you're also supposed to speak against the motion and like this has again a modified concept where you know there's a time limit that okay this is the time when you can stop like speak for the motion and this is time you can speak against the motion so let's say if the time limit is 4 minutes then 2 minutes you're supposed to speak for the motion and 2 minutes you're supposed to speak against the motion however the actual format and there's a little difference because you know this format is a modified format again to you know uh, make it palatable to people who haven't debated or who are Or let's say you know debate like let's say in general participating in event for the first time. But can anyone tell me what is the actual format of turn court? And just and uh, don't do not unmute. Just like raise your hand if you know about it. Um, cool. I'll just like find people who haven't spoken till now. Even go on. I just raised my hand because I participated in a turn court. I'm waiting to know what the actual turn court format is. But as far as I know, like the uh, the times I've participated in turn court, what happens is the the judge or the evaluator like taps, and then you have to turn at that very point. But I don't think that's the original format. Maybe that's a modified one as well. No, I feel like that's like the most popular one or the most popular oh. way of how turn court is done. So that's what I was referring to as well. So you know, like in our like when we used to debate in college, the way how they used to do it is like just a bell, and then you have to quickly like turn. Hmm. So you are yes. also being marked on the way how you're going to turn, like how on the way how you are going to be able to turn towards, let's say, speaking for the motion, but then. without like finishing the sentence that you were actually talking about just turn it towards a reasoning for opposition so you are yeah. also marked for your for your uh, wit at that particular time so yes that's what mm-hmm. cutter court is now moving on to apd now apd i think a large a large chunk of you all okay how many of you have done apd before like Ma- done apd before okay i have mama yeah. i have okay <laughs> No, yeah. I've been uh, WSTC. So it's kind of similar to WSTC. It's actually similar to WSTC. There's like a little, only a little bit of difference between WSTC and APD. It's just the timings. But like moving on. So the 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 APD format and just like it's just a brief of the format that we're actually telling you because there's actually going to be a full fledged um like session on how to go about APD, SPAR, DA, etc. So wait. Until we actually train you for that, it's just a brief introduction of the format. So APD again, you have two teams, and these one team goes against the other team, and you have each team having three members, and the debate happens between two teams. So again, one person, the one team is speaking for the motion, and one team is against the motion. Obviously, the motion is going to be given by the the organizing committee, and the sides are also going to be given by the organizing committee. So you would know whether you're supposed to speak for the motion or whether you're supposed to speak against the motion. So it's basically again a lot like WSTC. Now the last format then is about SPAR. and spar is one of my like most format formats in debates because it's called spontaneous argumentation now the the concept behind spar is basically when debaters actually want to you know they just want to um practice debating and they don't have time to actually go through the entire debate process of let's say 1 hour so what would they do is that they would have spontaneous argumentation now what spontaneous argumentation works at is kind of similar like ap apd like how you are given three topics and then you have to rank the motions all of that but then spar essentially you're given three topics and then each person gets to strike one topic so let's say the debate is between abhilesh abhilesh and aryan okay and abhilesh is speaking for the motion and aryan is speaking against the motion okay now abhilesh there are three topics now abhilesh doesn't like the first topic he strikes the first topic um aryan doesn't like the third topic so he strikes the third topic so which topic is left now um, second, the second, second topic one. second topic right so we are going to debate on the second topic right so the topics can be in two genres one is the silly topics and one is the serious topics so serious topics obviously you're going to have uh, topics on corruption topics on let's say abortion laws topics of 
on nationalism and stuff like that. But the silly topics can be as simple as, let's say, ice cream is better than milkshake. So you can you can get like these kinds of like topics as well. And these are really fun to debate on. Like, even though, you know, some people think that, you know, it's a universal fact that ice cream is better than, better than milkshake. It's actually not because you can reason it out as to why milkshake can be better than ice cream. So yes, that's what SPAR actually is. But how is the tournament actually going to go about is basically in three stages. One is the orientation stage. Another is the qualifiers matches. And then last is the fin finals day or the out round. Now, obviously, you're going to have um, orientation, not on the, like, you're going to have orientation from 16th to 18th. So today, tomorrow, and day after. And I'm going to tell you what exactly is going to happen there as well. But just understand that, like, you are going to get, um, you're obviously going to have a couple of, um, sessions where you're going to be able to, you know, like work it through and you're going to be able to, um, yeah, so you're going to be able to, you know, work it through in terms of being able to, you know, debate and being able to uh, also understand how the formats are actually working, correct? So let's, let's quickly go over the schedule once and then I'm going to give you an activity, correct? So this is what- Mom, yes. mom, I need a clarification. Yes. Mom, so we are four topics and uh, out of which uh, we all have chosen only one, right? There are four topics, as in? Not four topics. Like, uh, sorry, but uh, there are four uh, types. Four types. I didn't get two. Like, uh, one was a uh, spar and one was a... Uh, wait a second. You're so, oh, you're so, so you're saying that there are three, like four forms. Uh, those yellows, uh, the yellows. Are you talking about the formats, like the, the these formats? Yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, yes, you can you can participate in as so well. The, uh... So if you like another oh, format, it's not like only one. No, if you like another format, you still have time. You can register for other format. Okay. Which format are you currently registered for? Actually, I'm okay with it. It's par. <laughs> okay, cool. So if you want, you can like, and this is for everyone. If you like another format after like the orientation, you can obviously change your mind and like go on another, uh, like change your mind as in you have to like obviously debate in the format that you registered in. But if you want to register in different other formats, you can obviously do so. Cool. Now schedule. You, yes. I had a question that um, for the topic, since uh, like I am in turn code. So for the topic of the turn code, Will we be given that uh, pre like uh, prior to the competition or will, will we be given on the spot so that we have to just make a yeah, speech so on the spot? The way how turn code is going to work is that initially it's going to be given before like the, the tournament. So let's say one day before. So it also depends on whether you're a junior, middle or like a senior. So the difficulty level raises through that. Yes. So let's, yeah. So um, right now you're going to be given at least one day before the actual topic. Uh, okay. Are you going to the topic right now? No, no, not right now. As in like for the qualifiers, you're going to be given the topic one day before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you think for topic, would you get like one minute to think about it or is it like just right on the spot? So when you are striking the topics, it's on the spot. So let's say I'm going to give you three topics and it's on the spot. You have to tell which topic you don't like. So you're not given a preference. Remember, there, remember after the option is given, like the teams have finalized which one that um, this thing is doing hmm. and they select against and for. Huh. Uh, do the jury select uh, against and for or do the members? Yeah, so see, here, here's what is going to happen. And this is why you should join tomorrow's session because it's going to completely deal with like you know how the motions are going to be given how the draws are going to be given so wait until tomorrow because tomorrow is the the, the training session for far so i don't want to deal with okay. all these questions right now but if you have any question with respect to what i'm doing right now then ask so okay. the schedule is going to be essentially orientation plus training which is, is going the to be competition going to be grade wise so you have um you have categories. So, um, do you all know what is the category for juniors? No. Start to fifth. Ma'am, grade three, four, and five. And what about middle school, ma'am? 
ट्रेनिंग प्लान यू हैव tournament orientation plus brief on format plus activity which is going to be done today and then obviously brief of brief on format we've already covered with then next is dramatic adaptation where um, dramatic adaptation plus far which is going to be dealt with by tomorrow so you can obviously see the schedule 17 january it's going to be a session for 1.5 hours where half an hour is going to be dealt with with respect to the dramatic adaptation and then one hour is going to be like specifically um you know the demo, devoted for spark debate so we're going to train you how to actually form your speeches how to form your arguments um so on and so forth and then obviously the third day you're going to have turn code plus asian parliamentary and again half an hour session for turn code and one hour session for asian parliamentary debate so if you want to join like and you want to actually like learn all these formats it's always like open for everybody so just because you're like um registered in spark you can obviously like um join in and like understand how dramatic adaptation works and i think it's a really great opportunity for you to learn these formats because obviously we're going to like have more debates and more competition of being organized so, yes uh ma'am i want to ask that we have to also record a video and we have to submit it till 20 that no. for where turn good i'm turn no, good no. activity No, 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 no. This the, the activity is not going to be a, a video that you're going to be submitting. I'm going to deal with the activity in just a bit. So just hang tight. It's just a really, really cool activity that you're going to be doing. And right? because uh, the uh, letter I got to, uh, I there was written that we have we will get an uh, we have to record a video for that topic will be given and we have to submit till twentieth. Uh, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know know about that. I don't think there is a video that you're supposed to. Uh, okay, ma'am. Yeah. I think it's all, like it's online, so you're supposed to like get, deliver the speeches in front of the judges. If you supposedly, if you yes. supposedly wanted to do like more than one format, wouldn't the tournament timings overlap over each other? No, it they won't. We will be scheduling it based on like different times. So Mom, all of them will be on different times. Yeah. Okay. Now for this. Part a bit. Uh, will you give us like uh, on the topic around this and uh, like uh, this perspective? Will uh, be asked. The, yes, yes. We are going to like make sure it's like around in around theme, like something around India, something about it. There is for a nationalism. It can be something around that. Like not obviously. Like there are going to be so many topics. So you all the topics are not going to be like. all about indian diaspora and like glory of india but they are going to be like on similar lines so yes they are going to be like that um so how can we prepare for it we are going to tell you so just wait wait for it tomorrow okay, okay? cool sure turn code plus station parliamentary is going to be done uh, and dealt with in the last day so that's when you are supposed to focus on and that's when you're going to ask these like more intricate questions about what to do about this and what to do about that so you can obviously ask these questions now this is the activity and all of you all are um welcome to think through um use your brains brainstorm so for everybody the the motion is this house regrets the rise of english in developing nations now we have 2 minutes and if you have any question with respect to the motion ask me whether you don't understand the motion so this is specifically for people who are from 9th no people who are from 6th to 12th graders for third to fifth standards we are going to have a different activity so this is specifically for the like the elder population amongst you all so do you have any doubts with what the motion is this house regrets the rise of english in developing nations so we basically saying that in developing nations like ours in like ours is india so we regret that you know there is a rise in the way how english has been used like a lot like just see of how we are using it in order to communicate with each other um so this also regrets the rise of english in developing nations it can be like any nation um 
which is developing nation. So think through as to why we need to regret this idea. And then two minutes after which I'm going to give you a heads up on when, like when you are supposed to send me arguments in the chat box. And then if I have to ask you to explain the arguments, I'm going to ask like each person. Nobody's going to speak anything. Two minutes you have prep time research you are google go google it's probably not gonna help but are third graders allowed to do this are you can we do this right now if you are understanding the motion then sure otherwise you, you don't have to like get confused with this excuse me ma'am i was uh, disconnected for a while can you tell it what uh, you were on so the activity is, this is the motion. The motion is on the screen. The motion is called, this house regrets the rise of English in developing nations, which means that we regret the rise of English as a language in majority of developing nations, because English is largely a Western language, but then it has been, it has influenced a large chunk of our lives, um, obviously, because um, we were colonized by Britishers, and that's why English is a very prominent language in India as well. So we regret the idea of rise of English in developing nation. So you are supposed to speak for the motion. Now, right now, you're not supposed to speak. I'm going to give you two minutes, think through, and then I'm going to ask you to like, and just like write it in the chat box. So I want you all to write in the chat box, send in your arguments for, for the motion, and the time starts. Now, do just six to, uh, to eight have to do this one? Six to twelve, yes. Okay. So, if the juniors want to participate, they can, but if they are getting confused, you don't have to like do it. You have another like better activity, like not better activity, but like more interesting activity. So till third to fifth grade, they don't have to do it. No. Mom, and we have to make it point wise. So, like, a different, different uh, points are going. If you have more points, then just type it, and then um, I'm gonna ask you all to set it in the chat box. So, what's the topic of the debate that we're gonna do? The final. It's on, it's on the screen. It's called "This House Regrets the Rise of English in Developing Nations." No, I mean the final debate. In the final debate, it's going to be released later. This is just an activity, like a mock. And the time is over. So I want you all to send your answers in the chat box. Let's see. Okay, so we have received one answer and the answer is by Adit. I want you all to like type it in the chat box. So you'll have to type it. So Adit says that in English is a language developed by Britishers, the people who colonized us and treated us, they snatched our freedom from us. And now the same thing is getting repeated. English is making us more British. We have to stick to our mother tongue. Very good. Then Eamon says, principal argument that developing nations have a very rich history and background. This also includes, um, okay, so you have basically how, okay, perfect. Then you have English eradicates the use of tradition. Um, perfect, what else? 
we have uh, Shivang, and then you have Nij I'm probably gonna butcher the name. It's like Nijela. I tell me just just tell me how to pronounce the name. Um, so, it's Nigella. Nigella. Okay. That's a really pretty name. Thank so Nigella um, says English is a language that has been through a lens of history, like li literacy. If a person knows English, it means that one is trade. This is extremely rigorous how a language. But that's a very good point because it, like the moment when a person knows how to speak in English, they are perceived to be more civilized than others, which is a really like bad concept in terms of the supremacy of English, English that India uh, probably puts on English as a language. So Perry says uh, it is it is in ancient times when the English colonized the world. Now non-English natives. That's also a very good uh, uh, argument. Now Kanut says how the culture of country is severely detached. Looking at situation today, the youth in these developing nations prioritize English more instead of their own language. Okay. Um, Shivang says the rise of English makes people shameful of speaking their own language and gives them Wow, that they, there are a couple of like more, okay. Okay. Then you have Parthiv who says uh, rise of English can prevent people from learning other languages. That's also a really good point. Um, then you have Shubhan. Shub, Shubhan. You have, they say NEP clearly says, yeah, so you can also relate it to, the, to, to how like the local languages are being given more importance. Um, okay, so we have a couple of like great um, responses. Now, Advait says that people who know English and who don't, yeah, so you have more bifurcation in India as well. Now, the thing that I actually want you all to understand, and that's what we are going to do after this, this, this another activity that's there. So I want specifically like the third to fifth graders to actually participate in this. Now hang on for a little bit because I'm gonna like move towards another activity and then come to a conclusion because um, I think we have a general understanding of why we regret English and there are general like arguments. And then we are going to move forward with what is the understanding that we should have. Now the activity that I have for the, the third to fifth graders is that cats are better pets than dogs. Now. Y'all are supposed to make arguments against the motion. Okay. So think it through. And yes, do they have to speak for the motion or against? Against the motion. Okay. Now y'all don't have to type it. Okay. I'm going to give you the opportunity to speak. So you have two minutes to prepare. So let's have the stopwatch on. Do you have any doubt? So cats, cats are better pets than dogs. So you're supposed to say that dogs are better pets than cats. Okay. Ma'am, this is for class six to uh, 12. This is class third to fifth. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. So I'm going to put timer. All the best, everybody. I'm going to ignore that message that was uh, sent by mistake.
Okay, the time is over. Can I tell? Just a second. Okay, how many of you are prepared and want to speak? Okay. Miss, I sent it in the chat. Okay, you have already sent it in the chat box. Let me check. Okay. I so we have to. Response. Okay, you have written it. Okay, Rajbir and Perry. Okay. So how about we have someone from the seniors category going for the motion and y'all together respond to him on against. So is there anyone from the senior category who wants to challenge these juniors with debate? Adwait wants to go? Adwait? Oh, Miss, I left it raised. Okay. Is there anyone who wants to challenge the juniors? from the seniors category or middle school? No one? So juniors are clearly better debaters. I than... want to Can you switch to a slide where like uh, it yes. has the motion for the juniors? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Yes. Cats are better, better pets than dogs. Yeah, Miss, I could do it. Okay, I could do it. I want to do it. Even I could do it. Okay. Um, I um, can try. Cool. So let's have a crossfire, like a, like a really cool debate but before that let's just give the opportunity to the juniors and see what they have to say and then we can have one person from seniors asking them questions and then let's see how it goes okay so we'll give the opportunity right now to perry perry are you ready and then we're going to have raj okay so be ready start speaking about it yeah yeah you just have to start speaking yeah. um juniors yes. have to talk for the motion or against the motion juniors are supposed to speak against the motion Dogs are furry creatures and dogs are considered to be man's best friend for a reason. Unlike cats who sleep for almost their whole day, dogs are active and comfort you. Even famous people like Queen, late Queen Elizabeth II, Virat Kohli and Rishi Sunak have dogs, but not cats. Dogs have also helped us since the beginning of history. All right. Um, Rajbi, do you want to go forward? Yes. Uh, I'll start in three, two. Cats are not better than dogs because dogs are more loving and easier to take care of. As in cats, they are very lazy and very annoying. And that proves dogs are also very friendly to humans. As in cats, keep or being lazy and not having a kind of sense of humor. Dogs are more protecting and have more energy than cats. Okay. Thank you so much for that speech. Um, who else wants to speak for the, against the motion in juniors? Okay, Mitra, you can go forward. Yes, ma'am. Dogs are more better than cats because they help us get out of stress. It tends to have many neurons that cats. It can spell many things than cats do. It has a uh, hard to maintain a lazy so that dogs are better. Dogs need to walk, play, and it has uh, an encourage. Dogs also it encourage the owners to walk, help them stay active. It has more sense of uh, smelling, ma'am. Okay, that's also great. Uh, moving on to Kian. Dogs are way better than cats. They are they are more adventurous, and you can even take them out for walks. While cats just stay at home. They even scratch people or jump up on fans, and they are really difficult to get down back. Dogs are used in the army to. Dogs are used in the army to track out drugs and highly dangerous criminals. They will alert you. They will alert you at all times when you are in danger. Even when you go on trips like for hiking, you can have a dog as a companion. But a cat would not just be that good. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Those who have already spoken, can you please like um put your hands down so that I can know who has not. Cool. Vardhan, you're next. 
I feel that dogs are better than cats because they can be trained to do all funny and cool stuff like fetching a ball which cats cannot and they can help humans from developing allergies and asthma like uh, if you stay with dogs then um, they they help you like not developing allergies and asthma so you'll be really healthy all right thank you so much for that um who else from julia's category yes vanya go on dogs are humans best friends there are many reasons that dogs are better like service dogs not service cats also dogs can do cool stuff and can be trained unlike cats that's why dogs are better than cats thank you all right thank you so much um avika go on cats are more affordable than dogs because of adoption fees for kittens are lower than dogs cats don't take much space cats cats love to be only indoors less work with them cats are quieter than dogs cats can play for us with one thing thank you isn't that okay isn't that for the motions yeah avika you support motion. the motion you went against the entire junior category so you are supporting the seniors <laughs> It's okay, but the points were really great, so that's amazing. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. Sorry, no problem. It's okay. Um, we don't have to apologize for so doing something great. Cool. Moving on. Um, do we have other people? Yes. Okay, Vidant, are you already done? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you want to go next? Okay. cats are hard to maintain and are lazy so it's hard to get everything for them however dogs are very smart and know what to do and at what time you don't have to do much for them as they can do a lot themselves and are independent dogs go dogs guard us and are loyal to us cats mostly stay at home and are lazy dogs are also very adventurous thank you perfect just keep your hands down if you are already done okay um raghav okay raghav is from 7th standard he cannot speak right now <laughs> um those okay aryan you are not done yet right no ma'am okay and though i would like to counter attack you you have to earn a cat's love but that is not the case with dog dogs are loving creatures who will be loyal to you until the day you die dogs will always protect you when they think you are in harm But cats will just laze around and not even care. Thank you. Perfect. Um. Excuse anybody me, else? ma'am. Yeah. Yes. I have a class. Can I leave? Yes, you can leave if you have a class. But Thank we're going to have yes, obviously. Cool. Um. Okay, so I'm guessing there are no more people who are supposed to speak for the motion right now. If you are, just like raise your hand a little bit. I'll just see you. Um. just like unmute yourself I, at this point i can't make out who's done who's not miss i'm done junior sir done miss i'm done i'm junior okay who else um cool so shall we shall we give the stage to the seniors and let's see what they have to ma say ma'am ma'am i am left okay what's your name i'm dev chatterjee okay go on then yes for sure Yes, ma'am. I'm starting. Cats are better than dogs. Ma'am, cat. Ma'am, dogs are better than cats because ma'am, ma'am they or uh, ma'am they always do our security. And ma'am, but cats always sleep here uh, and there. They are very lazy. Ma'am. All right. Ma'am also, ma'am dogs uh, always come to us. Hmm. Ma'am, but ma'am, but ma'am cats only sleep here and there. 
So I think we are done with most of the okay, all the juniors. Let's have the seniors now. Um, who wants to first ask a question? So any question that these seniors are going to ask is going to be open to. Miss, can I say my points? Oh yes, for sure. Go on. Go on. Uh, dogs are the best friends of a human. They protect you, and cats sleep for sixteen to eighteen hours a day. And they don't protect you. They only lays around. Correct. Thank you so much. Um, cool. Can we have one of the seniors now pose a question to the Ma'am, may I speak? Ma'am, may I speak? Okay, I'm, okay. Let's have Nigella first, and then I'm gonna give the opportunity to others. Okay. And can okay. you all keep your cameras on so that I can see you? Because I cannot make out who's speaking and all that. So there are no people. um okay so i had a question for the rebuttal team that uh, they had uh, stated that um, dogs are loving but cats are lazy and annoying on what basis can cats be considered as annoying as so many people think cats as a relaxing or meditative pet whereas dogs are hyperactive and are not easy to maintain anyone from the juniors category who wants to respond to that I completely oppose that because dogs come in all shapes and sizes. If they are not easy to maintain, why do you think there are different types of dogs? Like few dogs don't shed hair, and that's the main reason why, like people probably not buy. But there are also a lot of breeds of dogs which do not shed their hair a lot, and also there are also breed of dogs which act like cats but are not cats and still have the, uh, uh, have the all the characteristics of a dog. Okay, Raghav, do you have a question? Mom, it's a card, a counter argument to what uh, Perry said. I think okay. that's the name, Pron uh, pronunciation. So <clears throat> actually, you said like, uh, yeah, you are absolutely kind of correct. So, but uh, if you see that uh, sometimes, uh, like, you should even know how to choose the correct breed. So, like, if you choose. Uh, if you can say that I can choose the correct dog breed, then in the same way, we can even choose the correct cat breed too. And in such a way that even somebody said that they can bring asthma, we can maintain them by bathing and uh, and they're more easier to for hygienic purposes too, as you, they, you don't have to take them for a walk outside for their uh, uh, for their excretion and but instead the, you can just easily collect it from their litter box and also to yeah that's the main thing and yeah and even somebody said about uh, asthma yeah from bathing you can even easily take control of okay, it dogs can even cause asthma all right, all right. but yeah yes. again if you choose the correct breed and uh, if if you choose the correct breed in dogs then then only if you don't choose the correct breed in dogs, then they can bring you harm. And if you don't choose the correct breed in cats, again, they can bring you harm. So it is all also dependent on the breed you choose. All right. Perry, you don't have a comment. Yes, yes, go on. Uh, Mr. Kudai? Yes, go on. Okay, so I heard that somebody said that um, dogs are way better than cats because they're ha active and all. But what if I'm working? What if I have to do work all the time? What if I don't have the time to take care of a dog? 
like cats like need such less care in front of dogs dogs you have to uh, make them go for a walk their excretion and all it's so tough and it's just so hard to handle and also here's a fact for you um, we're more related like uh, our dna is more related to a cat than to a dog so we're actually having more common um, properties to a cat All right. Does okay. anyone have a? I a, have a counterpoint, ma'am. Miss, okay. I have a counterpoint. Ma'am, I have a counterpoint. Okay, I want anyone. Um. Okay, just, just, just like, put your hands down and just keep your camera on and then wave at me if you can. Just wave. Miss, up. can I speak? Okay, just a second. I can't see anyone. I'll just stop sharing and I'll see you guys first. I'm done. Okay. Yes. Go on. So that just your assumption that you'll be you'll have work all the time. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe you're just jobless. You're just acting like you have a lot of work. <laughs> okay. What else? Anybody else who wants to counter that? Um, Can Junior, just wave at me. Um, I would like to. Okay, go on. Would like. So, like you said, some. Humans, what if they're doing work and all? But actually, it also matters on the different type of human. Some humans want a dog that is really playful, so they could play with them. And yes, you're right. Some people are lazy themselves, so they want a cat that's lazy and doesn't bother them. But it does depend on the human as well. All right, cool. Let's have somebody from the senior grade. Um, Samrit Gupta, do you want to ask a question to a junior? Yes, ma'am. I just want to ask, what evidence uh, do they have for uh, these things to say that uh, uh, cats are, oh, sorry, dogs are annoying and all? Uh, I just want to say that uh, this comparison is completely preposterous. Uh, when we see that, uh, uh, if uh, let us assume that we are parents, and how can we compare our children? Uh, we just uh, we just raise them and we just love them because uh, we love them. We do not uh, compare them on their qualities, and we do not choose children uh, uh, on the basis of their uh, qualities. Yeah. So basically, pets are your children. I heard, how can like, you... I heard one person excuse me, tell that like cats are very, more very... related to dogs. Yeah, but like wait for a second. I'm going to give you the opportunity. Let others also speak. <laughs> okay. Yes, who wants to counter that other than Penny? Excuse Pen, me, ma'am. I have, ma'am, I have another class. Can I leave? Yes, you can. Okay, who wants to counter that? Um, ma'am. Somebody from the junior. Okay, can I, you can go on. Can I, ma'am? Yes, yes, go on. Ma'am, like they said, uh, like uh, dogs like super active and we are like if you are tired also it makes us active like we have to have some activity you know we have to have some moment at least for them um, if we work more more we'll be so stressful but dogs makes us out of our stress it makes us active like cats if we have cats and we have more work we'll be so tired and come to our home and it will be also lazy I'll not be active, and we also be like lazy. Okay, we let the cat it be our own. We don't want us. It'll be so lazy. But if we had dog, the dog will come and tell, like have some emotions for us. It wants us to be active, like it's self. All right, Adrika, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, ma'am. ma'am. I would say something for the same because as she has said that. A dog can make you even more happier than a cat. So how could she say that? Because I really have a cat pet, and she used to play with me. She's not lazy. Even sometime my mother used to say that you are lazier than the cat. We used to say that cat is lazy, but I feel that my children are more lazier than her. And as she have said that uh, dogs can make you feel relief and less stressed. But as per my research, I must say that I have find that 
there was uh, i was in a journal quiz and i have found that the cat relax the more than a dog i have seen the ratio was eventually more than dogs as comparatively them they were clearly written that cats are more relaxing and they can just unstress you when you are in stress and it can also just help you when you have any heart disease or anything it has been it had been recorded that the pet the like owner of pets have less heart disease chances so in this way how can anybody say that a dog is better or like a far better than cats i don't feel that so all right okay excuse me ma'am Ma'am, ma I also have a question from a point of view of, of the junior one. Whoever is like trying to mess around with the screen, do not do it. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, okay, I, we will have to like literally like move forward with the session because I think I won't be able to hear a lot of points now. I think I have been able to give like answers. Like I think I have been able to give like at least one chance to everyone. So let's move forward. Um, can whoever who is doing so, it? What do you think? Who do one? What do you think? Who do one? I'll tell you. So that's how you actually understand it. And can whoever who is doing it can undo it? Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Please do not mess around with the with the screen. Cool. So the thing that I wanted to teach you all with respect to isn't the time you know, of the class over? No, we just have ten more minutes to finish this. Okay. Cool. So you have art of argu argumentation and how you actually make arguments. Now I hear so many arguments about health, about mental health, about let's say um being playful or about being being able to make like take more care of some pets, pets and so on and so forth. But these are just assertions. You're just asserting a thing that look cats. You have to take more care of cats, and then that's all. That's just an assertion. That's just a claim that you're making. However. in arguments and in debates you're supposed to support your claims by reasoning and evidence okay unless and until you have reasoning and evidence you won't be able to let's say give a proof and a valid argument that look you should be convinced of whatever i'm saying therefore even when you say that look cats are better better pets than dogs or let's say vice versa you're supposed to first do three things okay one give a claim that claim could be look um cats are essentially um more playful right that is just a claim nobody knows the validity of that claim now you're supposed to prove the validity of the claim now how can you do so there are two ways and there are not like just two ways i think there are a couple of ways but like primarily let's say two ways one is by reasonings you give reasons as to why cats are more playful so cats essentially don't need a lot of like toys for you to be able to you know teach them okay this is what you're supposed to play cats can literally play with anything and everything that you have around with them and therefore they're more play playful therefore you don't have to spend extra money in order to let's say play with cats now this is the reasoning that could be gi given from let's say side proposition that look cats are better pets now this is just a reason now in order to actually holistically say that cats are more playful you're supposed to warrant it now how would you warrant it the way or like let's say you're supposed to give more evidence now can anyone give me a like wild guess as to what evidence can mean Evidence is like um, scientific um, proof. Evidence, statistics, like how many people need cats more than dogs. Evidence, like evidence dog. can even be like a with your own real life. Uh, can yeah. it can even be because like uh, my uh, my friend's cat. She she is like uh, my my friend is interested in cars. So she likes cars apparently. So. You can't imagine like a cats oh, love cars, but it varies. Claim. But the cars yeah. are, they can play with anything. That's uh, evidence to that claim. Yeah. So what you're supposed to do is basically give evidence. Evidence can be multifold. It can be basically. It can be statistics. Be to, yes. But giving a personal experience is not based as real evidence because we don't have a real source of where that personal experience is coming from. So that is why statistics are the real evidence. Yes. So there's a slight difference with respect to statistics and personal experiences. So let's just categorize personal experiences or example, like as examples. Let's say I tell that look, I have a cat, and I think one of the debaters also used. I have a cat, and she's really playful. Or I have a cat. She, I don't really have to like tell that. Oh, she's not. She's she's. You don't have to like. Basically, she's not. Um. She is. So it may be a lie. Yeah. So you can basically the proof for that. No, like, but I think just by just these examples, 
are very important in debates. Now, I'll, I can tell you when these examples are more important, but let's first focus into the statistics part of it. Now, statistics, statistics can be the websites that you use, or you can basically come up with, let's say like this, according to this like statistic, more people in world like, like cats than dogs. So this is just a statistic, right? So you can use general research. So general research can say that, oh, according to research, um, dogs, dogs are more prone, to, let's say, um, health issues, but cats are not. Or according to research, um, what the research says is that dogs are more high maintenance than cats. So this can be just like research that you find, find out. However, this research is not always readily available. Why is the case though? Um, how much prep time do you have for spa? Does anyone know about that? How much prep time do you have? 10 minutes? No, you only have two minutes of prep time in spa. So in those two minutes, you can't come up with like possibly research material for every single thing that you do. That's the time when examples are very more like more important than just these like statistics. So that's the time when you can say, oh, my friend has a cat and that cat is largely like more playful as opposed to what the proposition is saying. Now, that is not a universal statement, but that, that can at least prove that not all cat, cats are lazy. Right, so it can at least mitigate the large part of what the opposition as uh, oppositions are saying, like opposition is saying. Right, so the first thing that you need to know is quantity of argument is less important than quality of argument. So just because, let's say, Rajveer gave five arguments and let's say Mitra gave two arguments, that doesn't mean that Rajveer can simply win over the number of arguments that he has presented. So Rajveer has to also give quality of argument, meaning Rajveer's argument should have claim, evidence warrant, reasoning, examples, etc. So whoever gives more reasoning, more warrant, more evidence, they are the ones who are going to be able to win the debate. So just know that quantity is more like important as opposed to quality is more important as opposed to quantity. All right. So the structure of argument. Now, first is assertion. Second is analysis. And third is evidence or example. Assertion. What is the statement? Let's say for the motion that we had, I think the first motion was about language, right? A large part of y'all said that because of the rise of English, people are like, people tend to like forget the importance of their cultural languages or like the ethnic languages of like a particular nation. That is just an assertion. Why is that the case? So the, the reason why it is the case so is simply because the amount of pe people who use English or the fact that English has become the official language of India the more like num the, the more amount of like time to use a particular language you tend to be more comfortable in that you tend to be more comfortable in it because like people don't essentially focus on it even in your schools so you don't know what your actually mother what your mother tongue actually is right so this is the reason probably why people tend to give more like less importance to their act actual local languages which basically means that this local language now is going to probably get extinct like it won't exist anymore right so these are the reasons now evidence could probably be like you giving an example of let's say um, a particular language in India which has literally been extinct because of the reason that like such such uh, like, because of the reason that like people give more importance to English right this can be just a research material now again assertion analysis as to like reasons and then evidence or example now in prepared motion and this is very important for you to focus on um, there are two ways how you're going to be evaluated so if you're actually debating in turn code or dramatic adaptation, listen to it carefully. Your research is going to matter a lot. Your statistic is going to matter a lot. The reason why is that it's not, it's a prepared motion. You have been given the motion and you have been given time to research upon that. And therefore we expect you to use statistics. We expect you to use research material and so on and so forth. But in impromptu motions or import, impromptu formats like that of, um, Let's say, let's say SPAR or let's say Asian parliamentary debate. We don't expect you to know specialized knowledge or research. And therefore, you don't have to actually give us like research material or statistics. And that's where reasoning come a really like become more important. So you have to give reasons. You have to tell what, why, how of the entire argument. And that's when you're going, then that's how you're going to be judged in these motions. But yeah, um, Raghav, do you have a question? Uh, Ma'am, uh, will uh, like, it's just for knowledge. Mom, in turn court, will we uh, have to create evidence cards? No, you do not. Okay. All right, then. Um, that's pretty much it for today. So we learned about what's going to happen um, in the entire
tournament, what you're supposed to expect. This is the theme. Obviously, we take a note of it. Uh, these are the formats we ran. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I have one doubt. Yeah. In spa, is the individual or in group? Is it, it, is, it is individual. So one versus one. Individual. Yes. In both when from court and spa? So tone court, spa and um, DA, all of them are individual. The only event which is a team event is Asian Parliament. Okay. Cool. So this is how the schedule looks like. If you want, you can obviously uh, like take a screenshot or whatever. Then you have a training plan. So today we had the session on tour tournament orientation, brief on formats, activity and common um, scale building of how actually you can make arguments. And then tomorrow you're going to have a session on dramatic adaptation plus SPA. And day after tomorrow, you're going to have a session on turn code plus Asian parliamentary debates. All right. And then we had activity and then we realized how we can make art like arguments and then structure of arguments. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions or if you have any queries, I'm going to show that claim evidence slide. Yeah. Ma'am, what time is a qualifier on 21st and 22nd? So because it's weekend, we are, we are, we are mostly going to keep it in, like, in the morning. Um, and because most of the people have uh, holidays. But if we get like um, your suggestions and like requests that people have probably school on Saturday, we can probably like keep, the, keep all the rounds in the evening. So the schedule is not yet out, but it's going to be out like really soon. Um, are you going to be announcing the name of the leader? Who is the leader? Like, later. As in, like, who wins the tournament and all of that? Of the top, for the topic. Yes, yes. So, after you're done, let's say, on 20 and 20, 21st, you're done with your entire um, format and everything, uh, we are going to announce the results of, like, top three or, let's say, the people who are going to qualify and go to IIT Kanpur. Yes. Well, uh, what about the so, team? Like, did this... What about the teams? Teams. So dynamic teams are also going to be formed really soon. So you, you should be able to know your teams by 19th because that's the last date of registration. I meant the leader for uh, like the like dramatic adaption or spa. What, what are you trying to like talk about? Who is leader? Who are you referring to? Ma'am, I think he's talking about like the famous people you have to like. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So you you are going to be given the the personality a day before, yes. Did you understand? How many people are going to get selected for the finals? Okay, so um it's different for different formats. So let's say um for dramatic adaptation. Each category, we're going to have top three speakers. So um, juniors, we're going to have three speakers, and then middle, and then seniors. All are going to be three, three each. Um, again, for turn code, it's the same. Three, three each um, format. Sorry, three, three each category. Um, for Asian parliamentary, we have only two teams qualifying. Um, that is from middle category and senior category. So the total like of four, four teams are going to be qualifying because it's just going to be qualifying to finals and for sparse again two from each category so mom i think in finals they uh, the two people chosen will uh, debate yeah so they are going to debate against each other so it's basically spar finals for middle class or so like how many people will be chosen uh, like since one category how many people will be chosen in one category which category are you in uh i mean <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the name. The one uh, can spa the. No, no, the one with spa. No, the one with spa. You're you're in spa. No, ma'am, the one, the one that's happening tomorrow. Oh, dramatic adaptation. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so there are going to be three speakers in each category. Oh. Yes. Okay. Like in teams, ma'am, for one team, three members. So, uh, for dramatic adaptation, how many members per team are you going to select? So then, okay, so dramatic adaptation is an individual event. So you're going to be selected based on your individual performance. So okay. based on your um, performance in the in-rounds, top three speakers are going to be selected from each category. So third to fifth, 
six to eight and then nine to twelve. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Um, what about APD, ma'am? Yes, yeah, so it's just going to be two finals. So two teams qualify from each category. Okay. So I'm gonna gonna conclude the session here. If you have any more questions, you can always like text on the group. But yeah, always try to contact this number, and you would be able to solve majority of your um, yeah. All right then. Thank you so much.